Well, today there's some serious advantages of having a 22 because the ammunition has gotten so much better. And if you look at the size difference, this is a box of 50 9 millimeter. Of course, 9 millimeters is a lot more powerful than a 22. And here's a box of 22 stingers. So you could fit basically three and a half boxes of 22 stingers would fit for um, you know, one box of of uh, nine mil so you're talking uh, approximately 175 rounds is on uh, 22 stingers is about the same size as a nine mil 50 rounds okay so that's quite a bit of difference you can take with you now I personally like the CCI stingers better than the velocitors and I think the velocitors are a little stronger in some ways even though they say they have more muzzle energy they do, the stingers have more muzzle energy than the velocitors, but I think the velocitors are actually more effective. The reason I like the stingers better is because you can see this, they're not copper, they're coated with a, uh, I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know what it is, but it's a smooth, it's not copper, it's like it's not going to tarnish. And, I don't know if that's a nickel finish or whatever that is, but it's not going to tarnish, and it's also a little smoother in operating in a chamber. And also, anytime you use a 22, and it's in these semi-autos, um, you want to use the copper wash rounds because the copper wash, the copper feeds on the feed ramp inside of here more smooth. You'll find that even the Beretta 21A, the little Bobcat, um, will feed better with that. And sometimes if you have a little bit of a problem with ammunition, it's, it's because the chamber is... Well, it could be a little tight, and these, these sometimes these these rounds are not manufactured absolutely perfect. That's why you want to go with the better ammunition on the 22s. These are very smooth, so they'll go into the chamber very smoothly. If you get some of the cheaper ammunition, not only is it, um, you know, the primers might be duds or something. Oh, here comes little Onyx the cat, <laughs> but uh, the primers might be duds or something. But um, <laughs> my little buddy down here. But also, there could be little irregularities in the size of, here he is, he's always helping. There could be little irregularities in the size of how wide the brass is on the 22. I mean, the mass produced, the real mass produced stuff, you gotta watch. So, it's my, it's my hunting cat going after them big deer, huh? Anyway. <laughs> but also with the Bursa. And this may apply to a lot of other firearms, man. I know there's aftermarket manufacturers out there that have all these different, uh, sometimes they're really good. But with a Bursa, you want to use a Bursa mag. Pro mag works with a lot of other stuff, but doesn't work with Bursas. Bursas, you don't want to use a Pro mag with them. They're cheaper. You just got to you just gotta bite the bullet, per se, and take, get the, because the Bursas are a lot more money than the Pro bags. You know, these are about 30 something dollars each. And for these little ones, they hold 10 rounds each. And you don't you don't want to go get Pro Mags for half the money and not have them function perfect. There's something about they're not Pro Mags are good for certain things, but not they don't work right in these these bursts, man. That goes for any of them. You want to get the bursa mag. Otherwise, these are very very reliable. If you have and this this particular little uh, semi auto is designed to work with more powerful M22 ammunition. If you use a low power 22, it's not going to cycle. You'd have to shorten the recoil spring or get an extra recoil spring and shorten that one. You don't want to and put the big the stock stronger spring back in for the more high powered ammo. But I like the Stingers the best because they got the most muzzle energy, which means it's going to cycle that reliably. And like right now, there's a round in a chamber, but um, it's on safe. And this has the magazine disconnect, even if this was off safe. With the magazine removed, even if you pull the trigger, it's not going to fire. And plus, the, the trigger, the first pull, is a double action pull. So, I'm going to load up these two magazines, and you know, it's just for these are the right ones, the Thunder 22. You know, so I don't know if it says right on the magazine itself. I got them in the package, though. Yeah, so that's another thing. If you get magazines, well, maybe it does say over here someplace. Very fine. Yeah, it does say right here. 
So if you get some, it's very hard to look at it, man. It's very difficult to see. Bursa 22 long rifle. In Industria Argentina. <laughs> and the Bursas are good because they're basically the guys that, um, the original engineers that created uh, the Bursa company in Argentina. You know, Argentina's got a lot of Italians in there. Uh, they were from Beretta Company. They're engineers for Beretta Company out of Italy. So, the only, and I personally like the, the 22 be, of this because it's designed to fire the higher power 22s. And the 380, uh, you know, eventually, uh, it's going to probably take you 5,000 rounds. You probably crack the frame after a while in the 380 concealed carry ones, but that takes you a lot of rounds. On a concealed carry, you're not going to fire 5,000 rounds. The 9mm bursts, the TRCs, and the TR, you know, the. Uh, I don't know, the Thunder Pro, they're not going to, they don't crack the frames. The only one that cracks a frame, eventually, maybe, is after 5,000 rounds on a lighter weight concealed carry. But this one ain't going to crack the frame because it's a 22. You basically got the same frame. And even though you're using hot 22 ammo, it's not, it's nowhere near the 380. But what I like about this thing, it is, it is pretty damn light. And it's got 10 plus 1 rounds. And it's just about a pocket pistol. If you got a large enough pocket, you could shove this thing in your pocket. And that's what I usually do. I usually have this thing in my pocket more more often in a 380. You know, it depends where I'm going or what I'm doing. If I'm just outside or something, I'll carry this thing. I might just carry this in the house or something. It's very it's very lightweight. But with those stingers, it's uh it's pretty strong, right? <laughs> it's a little freaking yo-yo, man. Right, boo boo? Yeah, I'll be taking it out to the ranger. We gotta take a bunch of stuff out to the ranger. I'm gonna be ordering a spotting scope here pretty soon. 60 power. Take a look through that sucker. Been busy with the SCV camp. I'm gonna be uh, doing other stuff with that too. But I know YouTube doesn't like you when you, you you're pretty much okay if you if you show a gun, but if you shoot a gun, they don't like it. You know that's how they are YouTube, right? So I'm just showing you the gun, you know. But just telling you that to get to don't. Don't skimp on the magazines with bursts. Some other stuff, there's other things out there that work with the aftermarket magazines. It seems with Bursa, you better stick with Bursa magazines, even though they're expensive. And again, I'm pointing out that these 22s, the modern 22s, like the Stingers, I know they're not cheap compared to regular cheapo ammo, but, um, and you're not getting the full velocity out of this, out of this thing. This would work better out of a rifle, 22 rifle. But still, it's going to cycle this reliable, well, reliably, and it's got the, um, you know, the case is not copper, which, like the velocitors are their copper case, which is not really a problem, but if you had it laying around a while, or if you're in a weather or something, you're going to kind of tarnish. And if you ever have a problem with a 22 not cycling, one of the things you want to look for is not just the feed ramp, but also the chamber. Uh, I found out my Bobcat 21A that when I sanded out the chamber slightly, maybe it was a half a thousandth more, it wasn't much. It worked a hell of a lot better. Actually, it works perfect with the right ammo. And if you shoot maybe 50 rounds through, it starts getting dirty, and then it gets screwed up, but it'll work good for the first 50 rounds or so, no problem. So, even with that Beretta Bobcat 21A, that thing I like too, because that's even smaller. It's like, it's like that big... You know, it's like, <laughs> but I like this because when you put this in here with this magazine, you could probably get a flat magazine where it's even shorter, or maybe there is one, but you see how it fits on your hand like that? This is like, um, it's almost like a full-size pistol, but it's a compact. It's more like a, I'd say it's closer to a subcompact. It's on a large side for a subcompact. It's on a small side for the compact category. It's, and it just, you know, it's it's easy to get the safety off and stuff. And it's double single action. And the controls on it are excellent, you know. So, it's got good sights for, like, a little gun. I mean, just my Beretta 21A doesn't have sights worth of crap, man. It's, like, real for real close up. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, I don't I like it. It's somehow I really like this weapon a lot. It's, it's the one I've been, you know, somebody say, oh, you shouldn't be carrying that, but it depends on where you're going, you know. I mean, 
I guess the unexpected can happen at any time. But um, with these stingers, they're not they're not uh, actually weak rounds. And like again, you know, if you're talking these survival situations, you can have 500 of these you can carry on you. You know, logistically, try carrying you know 500 rifle. I know, I know. There's no there's no difference in the category. But as far as if you had to hunt game or defend yourself. I don't know, the 22 is like, it, it could work. It could work. But look how compact it is. You know, basically 175 rounds approximately for the the, the weight of uh, 50 rounds of 9 mil, given a real rough approximation. And 9 mil is a lot smaller than, you know, the 45 ACP. You know, I think it's probably, probably about 60% of the weight. So... There's a beauty in compactness. It's just even like this little uh, thing I keep calling a Jeep, the Suzuki. Um, this little thing here is like the kind of like this dimensions of the willies. And just the fact that it's that small, it's got disadvantages. I mean, you're not going to pull like a, you know, a, a, an enclosed trailer with two horses in it or something like that, you know. But, you know, it's got disadvantages, but then it's got other advantages the big stuff don't have. And that's that's the advantage of these 22s. The biggest problem was with the 22s was the ammo was more unreliable many, many years ago. But if you buy the really good stuff, like the Stingers and stuff, um, there's other brands out there that are looking really reliable. You buy the really good stuff, it's a lot more potent than it ever was 40, 50 years ago. And actually, these stingers are more potent than the 32 ACP, which used to be the standard concealed carry pistol from the 32 ACP and the 32 Smith & Wesson was the standard concealed carry pistol from, like, I don't know, the early 1900s to at least the early 60s. They didn't have 380s back then. But the 22s were garbage back then, the 22 long rifles. The 22 long rifle ammunition today is... Hey, these stingers are stronger than the old 22, 30, 32 ACPs. The old, uh, so they're not they're not really weak, you know. And like I said, it's so small. It's like it's if you're in hot weather, you got shorts on or something, you just gonna throw it in your pocket. This pretty much, a lot of times it, it depends on the size. If you've got the large pockets in your sweatpants, these will go in. That goes in there, no problem, no problem at all. So it's a damn good overall weapon and. It's um, lightweight, cheap. The ammunition's cheap. Uh, relatively speaking, I know these 22 Stingers are a lot more money than the regular 22s, but they're still a lot less money than a 9mm. You know, I think it's 6 bucks a box. You can get them as cheap as that. The 9mm is going to run you, I don't know, 12, 13 or something. Then you don't have to reload these. I mean, they're, you know, they're not reloadable. It's another thing. Anyway, over and out. And the best way I could tell Onyx away from different from his mom, Feather, this guy rolls around in the dirt. <laughs> He's like a dog. Look at that dirt. I can mean, see that shit. <laughs> he don't care. He don't care. He's a puppy in a cat's body. <laughs> this guy's cracked me up, man. It's like having uh, the rascals, the little rascals around here. As soon as he's seen me move, he's ready to go inside again. Right, Bubba? Like I said, he's like a dog.